So the other day I flashed over one of my quads from a decent flying tune, nothing wrong with it, over to 4.1, thinking that it wasn't going to be that big of a deal, and boy was I wrong. I just want to preface this by saying that I watched all of Joshua Bardwell's videos to get mine set up. The, the Betaflight 10.6 configurator and the new stuff available with Betaflight 4.1 was so different that I went back to needing someone to walk me through step-by-step step how to configure this just to get it to fly exactly like it did on Betaflight 4.0. I'm gonna try to keep it short and just go through the basic configuration of how to set up one of your, your old regular builds and just how to get it flashed over to 4.1. What up, Spoony J? You're gonna go in just like normal and you're gonna find your board. Um, I did notice here, this is the first change that I noticed. There's a, a regular target and then a target that says legacy. And if you click the regular target and click the version, it's only giving you 4.1. It gives you the release candidates because I have show and stable releases and all of the release and release candidate, all that. But it's not giving you 4.0 or anything previous. If your board has a legacy behind it and you click the legacy target, then click the version, there you can have all of the older versions um, and and have access to those like at like normal. So all right, and we're gonna put this on 4.1.3. So we are on your right flight controller, version 1.8. 4.1.3 and we are going to flash firmware. All right, and now we are flashed to 4.1. So this is where you're gonna see the first chain. But basically what they just flat, what I just flashed to that flight controller was the basic STM uh, 405 file basically. What it's asking me to do now is to apply the um, the custom defaults specific for CL Racing F4S board. So click apply custom defaults and connect. It's flashed to 4.1 and it's configured for your specific flight controller. And from here, it's pretty straightforward, kind of like it was before. Uh, ports are the same, set it up. I'm on UART1 for my receiver and UART6 for Smart Audio, which we'll get to in a minute. Configuration, this is how I would set up a quad on 4.0 or previous. I run DSHOT 600, AK, AK, accelerometer on. Uh, these aren't supported, whatever. Um, so your accelerometer on, set max angle to 180 for your arm so that we can run turtle mode. Uh, receiver mode, crossfire, get all that set up. That's This is basically the same as everything was before with the exception of bi-directional D-shot and we will come back to that in just one minute. So you can go ahead and set up like rates, normal stuff. Um, if you're interested in what I run, this is what I run. 1.35 on my RC rate. 1.75 super rate, 0.4 expo on all axes. I don't know. And that is my rate profile. Save that. Now, while we're right here, I'm gonna click on filter settings and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna notice that there's gyro notch filters and there's dynamic notch filters, but there is no gyro RPM filter. And that is because we do not have bi-directional D-shot enabled. If you enable that and then go back into your filters, that gyro RPM notch filter will be, or gyro RPM filter will be right here. So we will get back to that in a minute. <clears throat> Receiver's the same, my radio's not on. Arm uh, modes, set up your switches, all the same. If you click on motor tabs, you notice it looks the same. Again, when you have Bidirectional D shot enabled, and you go into your motors tab, you will see an error value right here in percentages. And you will we'll, we'll set that up here in just a minute. OSD sets up just the same. 
But below OSD, there is a new tab called Video Transmitter. And we will, we're, we're going to work on that right now. But before you go into the Video Transmitter and I start explaining this, like I said, I watched all Joshua Bardwell's videos in the order that he released them. And I feel like the easiest way to do this is to go into the black box first and explain what you need to do there in order to understand what smart audio. Okay. So click black box. I'm gonna go up to the configuration, black box configuration on the debug mode, set this to smart audio, wherever the hell it is at. Smart audio, right here. Okay, save and reboot. Now, you're going to come down to the Sensors tab, and you can click Gyroscope Accelerometer, if your other ones are on, whatever, and just leave Debug on. That's all you need because we, and we just set the Debug to Smart Audio in the Black Box tab. So then you're going to plug in your battery, and you're going to get a value right here. Mine says 200. That means that I am on Smart Audio 2.0. If you get a value of 210, that is Smart Audio 2.1, so on and so forth. Pretty straightforward. And it's the easiest way to tell what VTX table you're going to need in the next step. All right, so once you figure out what version you're on via the sensors, you're going to go into the Video Transmitter tab. So you need to go up to this page. Here you can configure the values for your video transmitter. And the reason why they are doing this is because Smart Audio has the capability of overriding the default settings on most basic transmitters, VTXs that we're using, and allows you to transmit on different frequencies and different power, whether it's legal or not. So what Betaflight is doing by making us set up our own VTX tables is they're no longer at fault if you decide that you want to run on a channel or a frequency or a power that is illegal they can't help be held responsible for it anymore. So that's that's why they're doing this. We're gonna to go to this page. I've got it open right here. It's gonna open up and that's this is why right here is why I showed you in the last step to go into the, the black box and the sensors tab because right here, you're going to click on the smart audio version that you need. So if you ran your sensors and you got a value of 100, then this is the Smart Audio 1.0 is the version that you're going to use. In my case, I got 200, so I'm going to download Smart Audio 2.0 US. Save as. I'm going to put that here. A folder called BTX Tables. Hit save. It's downloaded. Don't need that anymore. Now we have the right smart audio file that we need. You notice down here it says VTX table. There's nothing populated. You could enter these in by manually if you if you want to, um, but this is what we're doing. Right here, we're gonna hit load from file. And we're gonna find the file that we just downloaded. And click that and you click open and you'll notice that your VTX table is not populated. And at this point, you can hit save and your smart audio will be set up and configured exactly like it was 4.0 and before. But like I said, there is a cool feature with the new way of having to configure on VTX tables. I run AKK VTXs, the FX3, and they have four power values. The power values on those are 25, 200, 400, and 600. And I will see those values in my OSD now when I want to change my power setting on my VTX and Smart Audio. Also, change that to 3. And then hit save. All right, so now everything is configured for 4.1. We have the video transmitter uh, VTX table uploaded. All that stuff's done. And you can pretty much go out and fly it. It's good to go. But if you want to experiment with the RPM filtering and bi-directional D-shot, then we will get into this now. Before we do any configuration in Betaflight, let's go ahead and get the ESCs 
set up to do bi-directional D-shot. So we can disconnect here and we can open up DL Heli. Now again, this is different than setting up D-shot 600 before. There, there's a few extra steps to this. So the first thing that you need to do is to figure out what kind of version you need on your ESCs. So you're gonna plug a battery in. Connect to BL Heli Configurator. Read setup. And this is what you wanna take note of right here, is CH25 version 16.7. So when you get over here to the GitHub link, you're gonna to wanna to click on this hex file 16.73. This file right here allows for bi-directional D-shot. These hex files below also allow for the bi-directional D-shot, but for right now, I feel like this is the safest route to go. So after you click that, you're gonna go in here to this next page, and this is where you're gonna use that number that you just took note of, CH25 revision 16.73 hex file. You're gonna open this up, you're gonna right click raw, and you're gonna save link as. That'll save and download your hex file and just put it in the folder that you want to save it to. Jazz ESC. Open and save. Okay, so now that it is downloaded to that folder, we no longer need that open. Now we can go back into BL Heli Configurator and flush the ESCs. And now we're going to flash all. This is where you're going to select version, select file manually, go into Jazz ESC. Here's our hex file open, and now it is flashing all of the ESCs with 16.73. Okay, everything is flashed, and we're good to go. Disconnect from BL Heli. We're gonna open up Betaflight again. We're gonna go to configuration. And now we can select bi-directional D-Shot. Our firmware is good to go to support that. Save and reboot. Now, when we go into the Motors tab, you will notice that we have an air value for each motor. So we're going to plug in a battery. Now those are getting values and they're reading zero, which is great. I understand the risks. I'm gonna run the master up. Now I am getting RPM readings across the board with zero to no errors. So I can confirm now that bi-directional D-shot is working. So now we can disconnect the battery and we can go into the PID tuning and we can hit the filter settings and we can go down here. You will notice that gyro RPM filter is now enabled and you can leave that set set up just like it is. Hit save. The last step to do is to change, I guess it's not the last step, you could have done this earlier, but we're getting to it now. So when running bi-directional D-Shot, most of these flight controllers, unless you have an F7, can't handle process load. So when running RPM filtering and bi-directional D-Shot, you need to run D-Shot 300 on your ESC motor protocol, and you need to change the gyro update frequency to 4K and PID loop frequency to 4K, and then hit save and reboot. So that's it, that's it. We're on 4.1 now. Fly it, let me know what you think. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, share the video, Again, if you have any more questions or if you need more in-depth uh, guidance on any more of these steps, I encourage you to find Joshua Bardwell's playlist on how to set things up. But that's it. This is, this is for me, that's the basic way to set up a quad from earlier versions of Betaflight and earlier versions <clears throat> of the Betaflight 10 configurator to 4.1 and configurator 10.6. So thanks for watching.